Six out of 10 people have difficulty understanding and using day-to-day -day health information. This increases to eight out of 10 when English is a second language, when you are unemployed, or when you have not completed your schooling. Parents can often feel anxious or frightened when their child is in hospital. And this can also decrease their ability to understand health information. Educating families and carers prior to discharge is really important part of an empowering them to take care of their children at home. Education is also vital in reducing preventable re-presentations and readmissions to hospital and can lead to improved outcomes for children and their families. Now let's look at a few examples of how this can be done. Okay, so Willow's medications have just arrived. Mm -hmm. uh, got it here. So she needs to have 1.25 mils three times a day. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Great, so I'll let you uh, take those home. Um, and I can see that um, we've got a discharge letter here from the team. So I'll leave that with you. Mm -hmm. I think you guys are, are good to go home. Great. Any questions? Not that I can think of, no. Okay, great. Bye Willow. <laughs> Simple strategies that provide families with resources, such as a fact sheet about their child's diagnosis or information about their medication are really valuable. Families can then refer to these later on. There are a few simple tools that can help families to understand important information prior to discharge. These include the teach back method and the ideal discharge tool. The teach back method is a comprehensive evidence-based strategy designed to help staff to verify understanding, correct inaccurate information, and to reinforce teaching with patients, families, and carers. It involves asking families and carers to repeat back the information in their own words. This often includes important information on how to manage their child at home. The IDEAL is a helpful tool to assist clinicians in sharing key information to families on discharge. Let's have a look. Include the patient and family as partners in the discharge planning process. And remember, the discharge process occurs well before the family walks out the door. Discuss what to expect at home, such as ongoing symptoms. Review and explain their child's medications. For example, the dose, the frequency, and how to administer the medication. Explain any warning signs or red flags, including when they should return to emergency or see their GP for review. Educate the patient and family in plain language about the child's diagnosis. Assess how much they understand. Can they repeat it back to you? Confirm what they know about their child's diagnosis the important red flags and their medications. If this is unsuccessful, consider using a translator if English is a barrier. Reduce jargon, use fact sheets, and engage a cultural officer or a relative when these are available. Listen to any concerns or questions they may have and address these. The next video demonstrates these tools in action. Good morning, Casey. I'm Paul. I'm the nurse looking after you and Willow this morning. Now the team have run and they're happy for you guys to go home to be discharged. Uh, Willow's medication uh, is on its way up from pharmacy as well. Now I understand the team have already been through Willow's diagnosis with you mm -hmm. and a number of resources that they provided. Yes, these were really helpful. Perfect, yeah. There's some great resources from the Paediatric Epilepsy Network. That's really important that you don't wrap willow up in cotton wool. However, there's a couple of safety considerations that you need to keep in mind. Now, did the team talk to you about things like swimming pools and bathrooms? Yes, so um, I need to watch her closely in the water. Um, there are no rooms at home that she can lock herself into, and I understand that I need to watch her closely in the bath, which um, I do anyway. Great.
I know the team's been through Willow's seizure plan with you already, mm -hmm. um, but it's really important that if she does have a, another seizure, mm -hmm. the first thing to do is, is to stay calm. I know that's a lot harder than it sounds, um, but I just want to make sure that you understand the, uh, the plan. And so let's just go through it step by step. Okay, Willow's starting on a medication called carbamazepine, which is also known as Tegretol. This is an anticonvulsant, which is used to help control the seizures. So here's a little bit more information on the drug, including possible side effects, such as drowsiness. So remember, she should be given 25 milligrams three times a day, which is also 1.25 mils three times a day, ideally breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Let me show you how to do it. Now, I understand there's a few more investigations we need to do, which also includes doing an EEG, which just basically measures the electrical activity in her brain. Is that correct? Yes, so uh, we already have the appointment for the EEG as well as the follow-up with the paediatrician. Great. I'm sure you've been told a lot of information over the last few days, and I can only imagine how stressful all of that has been. So it's important we provide you the right information and that you understand the most important bits so you can feel more confident managing Willow at home. So can you explain to me, what would you do if she had another seizure? Uh, so I know I need to have my action plan um, on my phone and just to get to the fridge as well. Um, I need to stay with her, um, time the seizure, roll her onto her side into the recovery position, uh, monitor her breathing and reassure her until she's fully recovered. Fantastic. And would you put anything in her mouth? No, nothing in her mouth. What are some of the things you need to be more cautious now with Willow? Um, swimming in case she does have a seizure. Tell me, when would you call an ambulance for Willow? Um, if the seizure lasts for more than five minutes, uh, if she has another seizure soon after the first one, mm -hmm. uh, or if I'm just really worried. Perfect. And remember, she's going to be sleepy after the seizure. So how long after the seizure would you give Willow to wake up properly? Uh, five minutes after the seizure, and if she's not fully awake, I'll call for an ambulance. Great. So Casey, a lot of parents get confused about their child's medication. So just to be clear that I've explained everything clearly and you understand, can you just show me what dose you give? Yeah, sure. So I've got here an oral syringe. This is a three mil syringe. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm not sure actually about the difference between those two. That's okay, a lot of parents make this error. It may help if I draw a line, which is handy, I guess, when you're tired, or there may be other family members who are looking after her. Okay, so I've got some more information on Tegretol, which is Willow's medication. So I'll leave that with you. Do you want to have a quick look at that now? And let me know if you have any questions about that at all. Okay, great. I'll make sure I keep this and I can refer back to it later. Are there any questions or concerns before you leave? Yeah, um, is there anything I could do to prevent Willow from having another seizure? That's a good question. So, I mean, it's really important that Willow gets a good night's sleep and gets her medications regularly. I think lack of sleep or missing medications can sometimes increase the risk, particularly in Willow's age. What if I forget things? Remember, you can always refer to the Epilepsy New South Wales Network website.